So I have an old stepper motor and it was one of these motors and it has an optical encoder built into the back of it. And they're otherwise, they're pretty nice stepper motors. They're 500 steps per revolution. And uh, with the optical encoder, you can actually run them closed loop to make sure they actually step. But I didn't have a pinout or anything. And I was trying to figure out, well, how is this thing, how does this thing work? And this is actually an old power supply from a dead um, uh, hard drive uh, case. It's a piece yeah. of indoor outdoor uh, carpeting from, from Home Depot. And uh, actually, oddly enough, I put some Velcro and it holds down the probes pretty well. Anyway, I have the uh, power going to a little breadboard here. And I've got the, uh, the, the stepper part of the stepper motor is not even hooked up. And I just have the, uh, this is just the optical uh, part I'm concerned with. I know how to uh, have drivers for the motors otherwise. And I've got power going into the, to the rails, uh, uh, negative and positive, onto the, uh, the breadboard. And um, I've got power going to the encoder. And I have um, some oscilloscope pro probes. And all the grounds are connected to the negative rail as well. So what I thought was going to happen was that I would rotate this around and it would generate a, a square wave. But I got these pulses, which were only half, half, half a volt or 500 millivolts that were normally high and then dipped down to zero when, when the pulse happened. And I didn't know what was going on, um, whether I, um, I damaged the encoder in the motor or what have you. And actually this was hard to trigger and I actually had that it's triggered about there to get it um, to, to, to get it to happen when I wanted to and um, I talked to my roommate and he told me their open collector um, uh, the encoders wired open collector and I, I hadn't run across that yet so I didn't know what was inside the encoder and um, when I hooked it up originally I hooked up uh, um, my positive here to, to the positive line in, on the encoder and the negative onto the ground and um, and what I didn't know is there was a transistor on the output of the encoder. And when the, when the transistor was working, it was likely, or when it was getting power, it was most likely just connecting the base current to ground. And um, this is like 500, this is like half a volt. And it was usually putting out half a volt until the transistor connected. And then it was dropping down. And um, then I put... A 10k ohm resistor um, uh, on the uh, on the output pin, and then when it would when when the transistor when the transistor when this transistor connects, it actually ends up pulling it high, as you see here, and this is zero volts. So I added some pull-up resistors going from um, plus five volts to the uh, the three encoder pins. When I added the pull-up resistors, I got pretty much what I thought I would get. I've got square waves, and um, and this is the this this is the uh, index one, and there's the A and B channel or B and A channel respectively. Inside the encoder, there's something like this. These are photo interrupters. They're, they come in a lot of different sizes. They call them photo interrupters because basically, when something goes through here. When something goes through here, it breaks. It breaks a beam, a light beam, and um, inside, inside here, there's on one side, there's something like an LED, and then there's a phototransistor, um, and um, you can think of this thing as kind of working like a uh, like a transistor, like a transistor, but instead of having a little bit of a little bit of, of, of power making the base, creating the base and making the connection, you actually have light. You can think of light as the base. The light actually uh, creates a uh, connection. And if you see videos or certain things are photosensitive that can, that flash actually operate them because it excites enough of energy inside the photons, excite enough of energy in the material to cause um, the, the transistors or, or MOSFETs to switch. Inside the printer motor, you've got, um, you have some kind of, uh, a wheel. You've got a, a little disc or a little wheel with a bunch of holes in it. And once again, we've got a photo interrupter. We've got a light source and a, uh, we have a light source on one side and, um, um, one or more uh, phototransistors on the other side. And when, the idea is that as this spins, it interrupts the beam. And if you have two of these, you can, you can figure out which way the motor's going. 
and there's one of those inside the stepper motor. But everything is not so rosy with our photo interrupter. You have some kind of light source here, some kind of a detector. You'd have like an LED on this side and a photo transistor on the other. Um, but um, as if this thing, imagine if you will, if this is on nothing, it's blocking it. But as something blocks it, it doesn't block it all at once. If it's right here, say, if something is right here, it's partially blocking it, then you get some voltage through and then as it goes through all the way and opens up again, basically in these little areas here, it's not completely open. And you get, if it was opening and then closing, like if it was going from, 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 uh, it was, if it was going from, uh, say from here to here, you would, from, from being blocked to not blocked, that's what you would end up, up with. You wouldn't end, or it might be linear. But you'd end up with kind of a sine wave, and if you imagine this as being from zero to half to five volts, with two and a half being in the middle. Well, the problem is that we want we want this thing to be accurate. We want something in here. We want something in here that's going to be yes or no. We want we want basically this is an analog device, and right now we want this decision of where we're going to call this thing open and closed at a very a very um, black and white binary zero or one binary way, but we end up what we have to work with is this is this this kind of this kind of curve. It might be linear. It might be a little more a little linear, straight. And but but generally, you have like two and a half volts. You know, if it's if it's blocked halfway, you know, you have like two and a half volts. So they put a comparator in, and the comparator is a configuration of an operational amplifier. And there's a lot of resources on, on the uh, YouTube to uh, learn about those. But what the comparator does is it gets to say two and a half volts, and if it gets any more, I'm going to call this zero. And if it gets up to two or two point five volts, I'm going to call it five volts. There's none of this in between stuff for us, and that's what it does. It keeps it down to zero until it gets to some voltage. You, in this case, two and a half volts, and then it goes all. Uh, it goes from rail to rail all the way to five volts, and then as the slope, as as the thing starts closing up at say the two and a half volt mark, it will actually slam down and and close again. And so, the cool thing about these is because um, the the uh, comparator is. Um, They've made them especially to be especially uh, binary. So, so basically, you can think of a, a comparator, something in that in digital electronics that makes um, something analog into something digital. It's it's kind of a a one bit analog to digital converter that all that works in real time, something like that, loosely, loosely. 